Hey lovelies and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already been up to date with everything going on in Nigeria, Congo, Cameroon, the Ivory Coast, so many other countries in Africa, please do your due diligence and get informed. It is important to know that these matters are not trends or hot topics. This is a movement and millions of lives are in dire need of our help. Now today's video is giving very much history class and it may be a little nostalgic. This might take you back to an era. The year of Drake's summer vibe album, Views. The year of the iconic mannequin challenge that everybody was doing and the running man challenge, we can't forget that. And lastly, I will never forgive you guys for this, but this was also the year that y'all elected that mango into office. Now, I really hope you guys voted this time around, but now in 2020, our makeup style and application has evolved a lot. Before there was the soft glam glass skin makeup euphoria inspired makeup the feathered brow looks we had the bold lips heavy cut creases lots of glitter on the eyes and highlighter for days but of course you guessed it we're taking it back to 2016 with yet another versus video by the way if you guys haven't seen my first versus video definitely check it out i've really been trying to come up with a cute name for this because this could very much become a series on my channel but i'm having a hard time but anyways let's get started on the left we have a 2016 babe lexi because that's what a lot of people used to call me around that time and some of which still do and on the right we have a 2020 babe lex both of these ladies will be demonstrating for us the different application and makeup steps that were predominantly taken or are being taken in each of these years and i know in my last versus video we made them rivals but we wouldn't put rihanna up against beyonce so why would we put these two up against each other you feel me they're both popping and iconic for different reasons so let's get started we're starting this off with some brows in 2016 if your brows were not blocked or tapered maybe you were not a part of the cool kids we would line over line and darken our brows with so much brow product and we would make sure that the front ends had that tapered illusion now in 2020 it's all about the feathered brows light and airy and very natural i use the got to be styling gel to put everything in place and although i've been doing this for years now i just kind of flick my brow hairs up a little but not that spiky look that i've been seeing all over instagram y'all know the ones that i'm talking about i'm just personally not a huge fan of that look but i fill it in mainly at the bottom to give it that sharp and crisp line and then i just fill in some of the sparse areas that i have just like that. Now moving into concealing the brows, 2016 was definitely the year of the halo brows, whether intentionally or unintentionally, with everyone using concealers four to five shades brighter just to conceal. Don't ask me why, I don't make the rules. But I would use the LA Girl Pro Concealer and Fawn underneath my brows. This line of concealer was very, very popular around this time and it was very inexpensive. So you know my 16 year old self definitely got a hold of it. Now I use the Revolution Concealer in C13. It's still a bright concealer yes but it's definitely not as bright as you can see so there was also this thing of connecting your brows to make sure that they were the same height again I don't make the rules but to conceal the top now I use whatever foundation that I'm using that day and in 2016 I would just go in with toast from the LA girl pro concealer line and then of course you know connect it to make sure that it's the same height y'all know the drill and then I would blend it out to the best of my abilities or what I thought was blended out and I would also go in with some more of that fawn concealer on my lids to create a really nice solid base for my shadow as you can see 2020 is looking very natural very clean and 2016 on the other hand girl i have no words and lex doesn't seem to have any words either but let's move on to the eyes y'all know we loved a good eyeshadow and cut crease action back in 2016 so i'll be starting out with creating a base shadow with a brown from the morphe 35 palette I hope you guys remember that palette but I'm just making sure that this brown shadow is really on there real good and very pigmented on my outer cut crease I'll be using an orange shadow for a really nice transition shade to give us that really easy blend and then to create that sunset shadow effect that everybody and their mom was doing I'm going in with a yellow color from the 35b palette I believe so while we've been doing all of this Lex has really just been chilling because sis cannot be bothered with any shadows in 2020 so she's just gonna wait it out until we're ready to move on now back to Lexi to cut the crease I've always been using the LA girl pro concealer in the shade fawn to get a really nice clean cut crease this was all before the P Louise base and everything like that came out but I'd really just pack on whatever gold shimmer shadow caught my attention that day and you can't forget to spray your brush for that extra pigment 
items and i'm pretty sure i just used some gold color from the 35o palette as if there wasn't enough on our lids already we would still proceed with using some glitter i'm creating a nice glitter primer base first using the nyx glitter primer and just packing all of that on so that my glitter has something to adhere to and i'm using a gold glitter from the j cat glitters i don't know if they still have these in beauty supplies but that's pretty much where i used to get these from and i will just pack all of that glitter on there until i was content and satisfied and then to deepen that crease color with a darker brown i really really don't remember what palette that brown is from but honestly let's move on already because as you can see lex is getting pretty pretty impatient let's prime shall we hmm. so whichever one of our o'shea influencers that started this i don't know if we should be thanking you or calling the feds but it was very very trendy to use milk of magnesia to prime back in 2016 now i mainly just prime with the milk hydro grip primer now does it do much i really really don't know but it feels good on the skin so we move both of our ladies are equally primed so let's move on to foundation the goal then was to have a super full coverage extra mattifying foundation look and now we pretty much just go for a more skin like and subtle look you know nothing that looks too too cakey i'm mixing a mixture of both of these foundations for that full coverage look in 2016 and lex is using the can't stop won't stop foundation in deep cool and then she's lightly just blending that out across her skin but do y'all see the difference between the two like it's almost very cakey on the 2016 side but again i don't make the rules okay moving on to contour and concealer my makeup routine has since evolved and i now contour before i conceal and i'm using a combination of the black opal foundation stick in ebony brown and the juvia's place concealer in color two in 2016 i would literally just go straight in with that fawn concealer girl and i would pack it on to conceal by the time i was done quote unquote blending my whole face would be a completely different shade and you all can see how the difference in technique and application changes the shape of my face almost then I would also contour by placing the contour so low and looking back it's really not that flattering on me but now as you can see I have a higher placement for the contour and this kind of changes my face a little you feel me but I also conceal now with the Too Faced concealer and butterscotch and the makeup revolution concealer and I place it strategically to where my concealer is not covering my entire face and it also gives it a very nice and easy blend as well then on both ladies we're going to blend out the nose contour you can also see that the placement of the nose contour is very different now to flatter my nose shape a little better if only we knew then what we know now shaking my head but i would even add a bit more concealer on my nose and blend it out just a little bit then to set the concealer y'all know we loved a good sasha buttercup setting powder back then it claimed to be a flashback proof setting powder and the black community loved it especially because it was one of the few setting powders that didn't have that bright white cast but then we would also bake to the gods like seriously but now i just slightly put some laura mercier setting powder and i bake here and there whenever i feel like it but most times i just pack on what i know i'm going to leave on for the most part this literally looks so terrible but i promise it gets better okay moving forward to add some dimension to the face lexi is bronzing or setting the contour with a dark brown shadow from the morphe 35p palette and lex is just blushing and bronzing at the same time with the pink orange and brownish colors from the Juvia's Place blush palette. I've really really gotten big on blush this year and that's something that we didn't really used to do or even do at all back in 2016. I would just contour and a very harsh one at that and literally that's it. But moving back to the eyes, on the 2016 side, I'm just creating some additional depth in my shadow by adding some shadow to my lower lash line using the brown and orange colors that I used from the 35O palette. And while I'm doing all of that, I'm basically just setting my nose a bit on the 2020 side with the bronzing colors that I mentioned earlier from the Juvia's Place palette. And I'm dusting whatever excess I have on the brush onto my eyes. I really love this step in my makeup routine now because it really suits my face and the shape of my nose. But time for some more. 2016 makeup style was really big on winged eyeliner because if you did not have winged liner you literally could not sit with the cool kids at all and that's like because I could not do a winged liner to save my life then but as for right now I'm just adding a bit of a winged liner using this NYX matte eyeliner but to add some mascara I really don't think there's any way to change up your mascara routine so it's all the same step <laughs> like but on the 2016 side I'm using the Maybelline mascara and on the 2020 side Lex is using the Huda Beauty double-ended mascara 
mascara and there you have it mascara is all complete now for the lips there is definitely a huge difference but nothing has changed as far as lining i'm still using the same old eyebrow pencil that i would usually use to line my lips because that is the closest thing to a really really suitable dark brown for my lips but for lipstick 2016 was really big on the bold dark lipped look so i went in with the classic purple lipstick from ColourPop. i remember when everyone was raving about these ColourPop lipstick and it honestly should be a crime that i still have all of mine but these were the most drying lipsticks ever like i don't even know why they were a thing but i'm really not doing much on the 2020 side just adding a bit of a pink lipstick and then topping it off with this juvia's place gloss but once that is all done then it's time to transform with some lashes and nothing has changed just the usual miss 3d lashes from the beauty supply and the look is finally coming together now but it is not complete without some setting spray i'm using the same setting spray on both ends the urban decay all-nighter setting spray and once it is almost dry i'm just going in to set everything with a blending sponge before i get into the last and final step and that is highlighting now i'm pretty sure i'm using the same product here as well but the application and amount has definitely changed we used to soak our faces in highlighter back in 2016 with our cheekbones adding enough until my little heart is happy the cupid's bow um the bridge of the nose and the tip of the nose as well and then a bit on my brow bone for some more shine shine and i basically added it to the same places on the 2020 side except for the cupid's bow of course but the application is just a bit more subtle than it used to be oh wait and then we can't forget the collarbones you would not have wanted to be classified as a makeup rookie just because you forgot to add highlighter to your collarbones you for me whether you were a 2016 makeup babe or you are a 2020 makeup babe or both your makeup routine definitely changes over time and it gets so much better with more practice i really can't wait to see where makeup techniques will go within the next few years and if your makeup application now is like that of 2016 there is no shame in your game sis you do it because it works for you and you look damn good but i really hope you guys love this video comment down below who is your fave and of course share this video with all your favorite people they deserve to be put on game too you feel me but with all of that being said, keep up with all of NSTARS and Africa's updates, educate yourself as well as others, and I will see you guys in my next video.